that first half. The, the same four people joked in the studio, I think, probably two weeks ago about planning your way to the final, how it, England never had a better chance. I've never seen it open up like it has done for England. And to have an opportunity to play an opponent like Croatia, I know they did well tonight, they came stronger into the game, but we allowed them to come stronger into the game. We looked tired and fatigued in wide areas, and that was the thing that surprised me. And that was the thing that shocked me most, was in those wide areas, how they got stronger and we didn't, because they've played two lots of 120 minutes. We've had a pretty comfortable game against Sweden. How do you begin to explain that? I don't know. Sometimes I, I just think back to some of the tournaments that I played in with young players, how maybe they sometimes expand lots of sort of what would be energy around the camp and sometimes the adrenaline and it could all just come on top. It's not a physical thing because our lads are physically very strong, but sometimes just the whole occasion of a three, four week period, the weight of the messages from back home and everything that comes with it, just weighing down them and eventually just fatiguing them in some way. It's the only thing I can put it down but to. But would that not happen from the start? Would you not say at half-time they haven't started, they've frozen, it's too much for them? No. Rather than happen in the second half when they started so well? Look, I'm, you're asking me, if, I, I don't know how the lads felt. All I saw was that Kieran Trippier, Ashley Young, uh, Jesse and Delhi in those wide of the three, having to get out, we really struggled in those areas and we really sort of started to narrow and became, rather than sort of like a... For much of the tournament, we were a 3-5-2. We became a 5-3-2. And when you're a three in midfield and you've got to cover the width of that pitch and they're switching it, you cannot cover the width of the pitch. It's not enough. It's not enough. So what happened was the, 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 the wing-back started to narrow in and it became difficult for us. You know what, as well, as well we... we... You know, we, we were talking about how tired they were, and I think their experience in the end showed because we, we couldn't keep the ball in... We couldn't keep the ball and play the ball around in a fashion that could make them have to chase it and pull them into positions where we could actually hurt them. I thought Harry Kane, again, it's another game where he seemed to be coming deep. He, didn't, he wasn't as effective as um, he was maybe in the first few games. And, and in the end, we, we, we just didn't have enough to actually hurt them, and they just grew in the game more and more. People like Modric, you know, he started to get more and more in the game. And Mandzukic, I say, he's in that area. What we said, you've got to be in the area to make the difference. And he was in there for a, quite an easy, soft goal in the end. Just trying to work out what I'm thinking. Um, well, it's that sort of evening, isn't it? it? Is. Because at half-time, England has such control. Yeah, and I'm, we're talking about... I think one thing that's, that's coming in for me is the inexperience of the England team. And I think Gareth said before about... This team, 2022, is, is, the, is the aim and anything else is a bonus. It's a building process. And sometimes when you've got young players and, and a young team, the, that nervous energy, et cetera, all the energy you can, you can burn up when you're playing a game. You're playing against an experienced Croatian side, whether they're playing well or not. And over a period of 90 minutes and then extra time, maybe you just do fall a little bit short because of that inexperience. And it might not be any one thing. We look tired, but so sometimes you've got to look around at the senior pros in the side and go, yeah, we're all tired, but you, you block holes. You, I said to uh, half-time, do your job. If you stop cross, head the ball, hold the ball up, do the simple things when you get tired. And we just looked like we lacked that little bit of composure in that area. It's not a huge criticism, it's, it's just a fact. And I think sometimes you, you, that can get missed in, in the whole process of assessing it. You've, yeah. been, you've been listening to what everyone says. What's your assessment of it all? Yeah, I kind of agree with him. Um, <laughs> no, I think you, you, Harry Kane made a point about you know, the, the next step they're trying to take. But the next step is the biggest step. Trying to get to a World Cup final. The hardest step. Uh, the hardest step, by far. And it didn't show enough quality tonight, England. Whatever, we praised them. And I think the opportunity <coughs> was there to win the game. <coughs> Having that opportunity and going and taking it is another... another challenge and they didn't do that and they will be kicking themselves maybe not so tonight because they'll be sore and they'll be raw but when Garrett gets back over the next few weeks with his staff they're looking to go maybe could have done something differently but you always have that mindset after the game when you get beaten but it was just a step too far from and them. also the chances fell for the person they wanted the chances to fall to Harry Kane had the two chances in one in the first half and then the header late on did you look at Harry Kane tonight he, and think and actually to be fair even against Sweden a little bit and think not quite at his sharpest he didn't best. and I'm a big fan of Harry Kane I think he's, uh, he's going to be a superstar but tonight even this chance here I think his first touch just not getting out from under his feet I don't know right the strikers will have a different opinion but he just looked a bit sluggish tonight yeah, well he's carrying what, an injury I don't yeah, know but he didn't look quite himself well it, it was like this one was I, that's who you want it to fall to he seemed to he came over the bodies and he slashed his head at it rather than just punching it back to where it's coming from. Tried, tried to get anything on it to get it on target. But like I say, you, you can look back now. I'm not going to tell Harry Kane to square it to Raheem Sterling, but now we look back and we're out of the World Cup. You think to yourself, it was an opportunity to go 2-0 up. 
It's a whole different game. And you do, sorry, I want to make the point, you look at all the, these England players, a lot of them haven't actually won a trophy, and it's highly unlikely the first trophy you're going to win your career, I think, is going to be World Cup. Mm. So I think that caught up on as well, that lack of experience. Well, Henderson's obviously played in the Champions League final. There are a few boys who've won the league with Manchester. Yeah, well, no, no, I'm, few, I'm yeah, backing your point up. In terms of actual showpiece occasion matches, they are quite inexperienced. Yeah. On, on Harry Kane, I'd be amazed if we didn't learn in the next few days that he's been carrying an injury since yeah. the Columbia game. I'd be amazed. Mm. He, was, he was carrying something in the last 45 minutes against Columbia. He, he wasn't even moving around. No. Against Sweden, he was static. I'd be amazed. I mean, that's not an excuse, no. because to be fair... Colombia was like, staying on for penalties. He was. Like, and I, I'd be amazed if he, if he doesn't come out in the next few days or week and something emerges around his fitness, because he, he just not looked right, to be fair. Yeah. I haven't had the focal point. That's what it was as well. You know, because, like I said, with Manzuki, he was there in that place. So when they put him in the balls, it was dangerous. And we didn't seem to have that. And when Marcus came on, he's trying to get himself into the game. But Harry wasn't in there. So even if we did get it in there, we would have something to maybe finish it off. What about that argument that it's only when you realise what you might be about to achieve that the nerves really set in? You go, oh, blimey, is this what we're about to do? Do, 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 you, do you put any credence by that, England? Or what? Gary's shaking his head, no? I, th I think, I think, I think for, the f for the first time... Certainly in parts of the first end of the first half, when we or in the second half, when we started to get a little bit negative. That was the only time that I think we've seen this, them take a step back. And we were saying, oh, positive, be more, yeah. you know, play like... That's the only time in that game when I can say that. Sort of hold on to what you have sort of mentality comes yeah, in. Yeah, and I think that the fact that it was <laughs> so close with, you know, 21 minutes to go and, and one nil up, maybe they just tightened up a little bit. That's human nature and that's the experience that we've yeah. been talking about. He came out and made Croatia look awful for 45 minutes. Yeah. Mm. No, but my point is, therefore, in the second half, you think, well, we're getting closer to this. Do they, you know, like you're serving to win Wimbledon, whatever, sometimes you can really tighten up. You suddenly miss I, a four-footer to win there, the Open, that sort of thing. There was, there was, there was, I think Kyle Walker got booked... And then he sort of did like a shank clearance. And then for the goal, him and Kieran Trippier just didn't quite sort it out at the back post. It's, it, it comes down to decision making. You look at this, we weren't quite getting out. Look at Kieran Trippier now, he's just not quite getting out. Kyle's not getting across. You know, this is the Manzukic goal. So before it even comes in, we're one man short wide. We're not shuffling across. Obviously, John Stone's in the middle has switched off, and he'll know that he's, you know, he's made a mistake there for that goal. And, and it's one that he'll carry with him. But. Earlier in the game, earlier in the tournament, Tripp is flying out to the first man. Kyle Walker's in behind him. None of that happens. Our legs have gone. But even you look at the goal there, we talk about England playing out from the back and their DNA and Stones is very comfortable on the ball. You know, you still have to have the art of defending. And I always talk about players smelling danger. Stones is, Stones is ball watching. He's on his, and then when the goal goes in, he's looking at people as if no one gave me a shout. You're not going to get a shout. And if it, you know, in a, in a World Cup semi final, you, you, you've got to deal you gotta, with it. You've got to be aware of it and deal with yourself. And we've seen it do for Man City before. He does, you know, he, he, he does get caught out defensively. You talk about smelling the danger. You also talked about at half time about smelling the opportunity that England needed to smell it then and there that Croatia were down. Yeah, but then you have to be good enough to take it. Yeah. And I think we've seen tonight England <coughs> aren't quite good enough to take that opportunity. Yeah. Do, do you know, I, I think back to, to my career and watching players, it certainly wasn't, wasn't me. But the best players in the final third, they always looked like ice cold and they always slowed themselves down and they always looked like they had an extra moment to be able to find the pass. We looked really rushed. Yeah. So we look, and we're dribbling with the ball, we're not, in, we're qu not quite in control of it. We look like we're just going to knock it one step too far, like we're not ready to make a pass. So we never quite see the pass or the, uh, or the, the, sorry, the run of Harry Kane. Or the, we're always too rushed in our minds. And that's from Jesse, from uh, Raheem, from Deli Ali and, the, and, and Loftus Cheek as well, you can put into that category. They're young players, they just don't slow themselves down in their minds enough in the final third, but that's youth and yeah, that's, maybe they that's, need that's more, maturity. Maybe they need, yeah, they need that's that's maturity. maturity. That, come, yeah. that, that comes with the whole tournament's been yeah. like that. Yeah. When you look out and the chances we've created and, and how many we've scored, most of them some set pieces. There's something, the balance is not quite right in that aspect. Well, nine of the 12 from set pieces and the fact that England struggled for creativity would suggest, actually, just before we go to the break, that England have massively overachieved. However much the disappointment is tonight, Ian, that to reach the semi-finals, yeah. when, you, when you set it up against that, that most of the goals <coughs> have come from set pieces and yeah. they are lacking creativity, that England have actually overachieved. Yeah, and I'm, like I said, I'm very pleased for the way it's gone.